that's me reading the handlers as starting to kind of grasp some of the ideas and applying it instead of just going through the motions. Remember leapfrog? Remember when we just, you leapfrog in front of the person in front of you? That's all we're gonna do here. And so the idea is real short bursts of heel work, long durations of weight, short burst to heel, little, bur little weight, short burst to heel, little weight. So when it's your turn to focus on heel, you're focusing on all those little things we did in the field. Loose lead. It's the biggest issue I see right now is we're not turning the pressure off. When they're in the right spot, there should be no pressure. That allows us to get change when we actually have to put pressure on them. If there's, if there's constant pressure on at a level of four or five, the only way you get change is to go to 14 or 15. That's too much pressure. It's not necessary. And most of us are having a hard time getting there. So what you're doing is you're getting up to 10 and it doesn't work. And then you go 10 again, it doesn't work, it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And we just get frustrated and we become big nags. And the dog realizes, this person just pulls on me a lot. Doesn't really understand what's going on. What they need to understand is when they're doing the right thing, there is zero pressure. So keep in mind, loose lead. When it's your turn to heal, you 100% are focused on all those little details. The positioning, the pace, the loose lead. If you need to go faster, you go faster. If you need to go slower, you go slower. Number off, I'm gonna have you number off. One, two, one, two, one, two. Twos are gonna go first. So twos are moving, ones are standing. Twos are focused on their heel work. You're, all you're gonna do is step out from the road, from the edge of the road, and make a loop around the person in front of you. You're gonna retake the position of that person that just moved out of it. So keep your spacing. Ones, you don't have, you, you have to focus as well, because you're gonna have a dog that's moving around you, and you have to make sure your dog remains focused on you and isn't creating a lunge or a distraction to the dog that's moving. That's the valuable part for trigger. Sitting still. Okay, everyone understand what we're gonna do? Twos, on the count of three, twos leapfrog in front of the one in front of you. One, two, three, go. To make it easier on you, make more space between you and the next dog. Don't walk them right past each other. It's too hard. Get them used to what we're doing. They've never, they've never seen this drill before ever either. So now number ones, you're gonna leapfrog out in front. Learn from what the twos did. Belly out, make some space, take your time. This is no rush. You do what you have to do to get to the next spot safely. Ready ones? One, two, three, go. You gotta turn the pressure off. There you go, there you go, there you go. Keep moving, keep moving Carrie. Keep moving, Carrie. There you go. And turn. You, there, I saw it coming. There, and sit, and reset them. Carrie, one of the biggest things I think you can do is keep moving. Every time, you get, every time it gets a little bit sticky, you stop. And allow it to kind of do what he wants to do, and then you try to correct it later. Keep, keep his mind moving with you. How was that one? Leaders, how is it looking? Pretty 
good. Better? Yep, yeah, we're getting there. Okay, number ones. One, two, three, go. Beautiful. Way to take your time. I thought maybe you forgot it was your turn. <laughs> but you know what? That was exactly what I would want you to do. Be ready. Be prepared. Be comfortable. Look how nice that looks. No rush. This is the most patient group I've seen as far as not feeling rushed. You're developing a little bit of confidence with the idea of I know what I'm supposed to do and I'm not just going to do it because they said go. I'm going to do it when the time is right. It's really positive to see that. That's, that's, that's me reading the handlers as starting to kind of grasp some of the ideas and applying it instead of just going through the motions. Don't just do it to do it. Who's up? Number twos. Twos. One, two, three, go. And if you're doing really well, move slightly closer to the dogs as you pass them by. Challenge yourself a little bit each time. That's, that's great heel, Mike. Okay, this time I want you to count the number of corrections it takes for you to get from starting point to landing. Who had more than five corrections? Anybody? Less than five? Who, anybody have more than five? Anybody have more than three? Anybody else? That's the, that's the best, this is the best group of heel work I've seen. Okay, that was good. It got real good, especially as we kept going. Now what we're gonna do is make it a little tougher. More movement, more action, more constant stuff. But we're gonna start out with trigger, and you're gonna, you're gonna come across on this side, and then you're gonna weave. So we just call it serpentine. This is, this is the part that like when I go train with my dogs and other people, this is the part that I think is some of the most valuable part, what you're doing right now, just standing here. Because these dogs start to understand, we do this more than anything. And when they can stand here and do this more than anything and go, I might as well lay down for a little while and rest. That makes it real comfortable to go do a hunt or a training afternoon or a camping trip or a soccer game or a you name it. Remember that drill where I was up along that fence and I went like at a snail's pace and it drove that dog nuts until he couldn't help but slow down? That's what you gotta do. This, the challenge for this right now is it's such a long drill for that dog. He, I bet, was he, was he doing pretty well with just leapfrog? Yeah. By the third, fourth, fifth time? It's because it was on and it was off. It was on and it was off. And he got to be able to adjust to do that. This is going, oh my God, on, 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 on. So stimulating. But by the time he gets done with it, he's going to pass so many damn dogs, he's going to go, here's another one. But it's us, it's us having the patience to get through that. Nice loose lead. See how those rings are touching? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Your pace is good. It's all right. It's all right. Come here. Come on. Sit. 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 Sit down. Good. Enough. Good. And then reset them. Just be patient with them. Be patient with them. Let him throw his fit. He's not going to get his way. Sit. 
There, good boy. Sit down, good. Toughest one for him to go by, just right now. That was the toughest one, and he did it. Tell him he's good. Come on. Good. Now I want you to know, I made three corrections and they were real mild. About like that. Walk past every dog in this group. He can do it. You can do it. We're going to get you to do it together. Now, there was a big difference between serpentine and leapfrog. There was a big difference between leapfrog number five and leapfrog number one. It was significant. It got better. The, uh, the idea of healing through, Trigger didn't struggle with healing through that much, did he? It was sitting still and letting all the other dogs walk by him. That's what that dog needs to do more of. This is the hardest part because this is, this is the easiest part for Zach to say, I'm not going to practice that. It's miserable. It's a 100% the part that needs to be practiced. It will get better just like everything else we've done gets better the more we do it. If we don't do it because it doesn't, isn't good, it'll never be good. So this time, the difference with serpentine and leapfrog is, leapfrog is short bursts of activity. It's short bursts of focus. And then you get to move. And then you gotta wait. And then you get to move. And then you get to wait. And then you get to move. And they got pretty understanding of the routine. Serpentine is long. Durations of both. Focus on heel work, focus on steadiness. I wanna get somewhere in the middle. So this time, we're gonna leapfrog twice. You're gonna get twice the amount of activity and twice the amount of dogs walking by you if you're a number one. Number twos are first. One, two, three, go. Sassy. Yeah. And now, take your second. There, there. And now leapfrog your second. See how loose that lead is? Nice, right? And as you feel comfortable, you can give just a little freedom, but look at if, it, if she takes it, then, then correct. Because you can even, you, you're eventually gonna be able to let that down just even a little bit more. Good. Twos, double leapfrog. On the count of three. One, two, three, go. Lucas, that looks fantastic. And with, in these conditions when it's so hot and he's having a hard time, don't be afraid to pick your pace up a little bit. I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to get him to be with you, be with you, be with you. This is really tough for him and it's long. So don't be afraid to move a little faster on your part to match what he's doing to just get some success. Yeah, and she's got, she's, got, she's got to get her second yet. No, you're fine. Stay right there, Carrie. You're good. You're just talking about her pace so slow and she's doing a great job of trying to respond to the puppy. But right now I'm telling her, speed up a little bit to make it easier on your pup. I get to a point in a session where I go, man, we've accomplished enough. 
Let's call it quits and end it positively. Right now, I don't hear trigger. <laughs> That's a positive. Carrie's gotten some really good heel work down here in with Boone. That's a positive. All these other, the little puppy right now is 16 months old and he is battling to stay, keep it together. Let's end this the way it is. Now, get back, get them back to the warehouse, put them up in their crates, give them a drink of water, and let's let them soak this session in because this session was valuable. <laughs> <laughs>